Pro-Israel lobbyists are supporting the TikTok ban, joining the anti-China lobby, aka the entire ruling class, and the intelligence agencies who have been trying to pass this for years. A bill that would force ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, to sell TikTok to an American tech company or be banned in the United States just passed through the House with a huge bipartisan majority. The bill is headed to the Senate where, if it passes, we'll then send the bill to Joe Biden's desk, who's already promised he'd sign it into law. Now, if you remember back, there was a big push to ban TikTok under the Trump administration, which failed. But the recent outpouring of support for Palestine has breathed new life into the push to ban TikTok because TikTok has become a hub of content exposing Israel's true genocidal nature. In a Senate hearing in February, Lindsey Graham claimed that TikTok is being used to help people who, quote, want to destroy the Jewish state. Ted Cruz claimed that TikTok was deliberately promoting anti-Israel propaganda on its US algorithms, and possibly the most perplexing claim of all came from Nikki Haley, who said that for every 30 minutes someone watches TikTok, they get 17% more anti-Semitic. Most of the politicians supporting the ban, including the three I just mentioned, receive huge donations from pro-Israel groups. But the Israel lobby itself has also been vocal on the ban. The Jewish Federations of North America, one of the largest pro-Israel Jewish organizations in North America, praised the House for passing the bill, claiming that China was intentionally, quote, filling its state-controlled media and social media channels with anti-Semitic and anti-Israel rhetoric. They also said of all the social media platforms, TikTok was, quote, the worst offender. Now, this is an interesting thing to say because I'm sure many people have noticed by now that Twitter has become a cesspool of actually anti-Semitic pro-Hitler content, but there's no movement to ban Twitter. On leaked audio, the CEO of the pro-Israel Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, was caught saying that Israel doesn't have a left or right problem, it is a Gen Z problem and a TikTok problem. So does Israel really have a TikTok problem? Yes. Research by a pro-Israel data scientist showed that for every view that videos on pro-Israel hashtags got, videos on pro-Palestine hashtags got 54 views. He claims that this proves that there's a bias, but it really just shows that far more people are using pro-Palestine hashtags, reflecting the well-known reality that far more people, especially young people, support Palestine. Social media has played a crucial role, not just in exposing Israel's lies, but also in giving voice to those who have been traditionally excluded and censored by the corporate media. Congressman Mike Gallagher said this openly in a speech calling for TikTok to be banned, saying he supports its censorship because TikTok has become, quote, the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. In a sense, their attempt to ban TikTok is a recognition of its power, not of the platform itself, but of the power of millions of people to organize themselves online, share information, and turn that virtual outrage into a highly organized global movement capable of manifesting itself offline and shaking the halls of power. TikTok is the largest social media platform in the world, with 1.7 billion users worldwide and a whopping 150 million users in the US, which is almost half the country. Many of these users now support Palestine and have been reinforced by the videos they've been watching on the platform. Banning TikTok won't make these people disappear or make them unlearn what they've learned because it's not TikTok making people think that Israel is committing a genocide. Israel is committing a genocide and lying about it and it's all being exposed on TikTok.